Hello everyone, and welcome to my Dominions 5 Middle Age tier list. This is in celebration of getting 200 subscribers, so thank you for subscribing. I'm glad people enjoy my content. Much like the first video, this is all my opinion. I'm not a Dominions 5 expert. I learn new stuff about Dominions every time I play it. Anyway, let's just move along. You know, S tier nations are the best, so we'll start with those. I think the number one Middle Age nation is pretty hard to call. There's a lot of really, really super strong nations. So for number one in the Middle Ages is Solaria. They have effectively an infinite number of reanimator priests, so they can have an infinite number of skeletons. They also have pretty excellent access to magic. Having high death is really great. And speaking of which, we can go to my second, Nazca. Basically, to summarize, Nazca, uh, if you watched my Jotunheim game, you could saw I had some real heartaches dealing with Nazca, but I was ultimately, spoilers, able to deal with them. So I don't think they're the best in the game, uh, if only because their early game can be kind of weak before they get their insane value train going. Next is Pangea. Pangea basically retains all the strong points that they had from their early age. They still have really great sacreds. They have super high nature access. Their blood's even better. They still have really easy to spam seducers. Here we have Naba. Naba basically has all the same strengths as Ubar. They have crazy troops, insane mages that can fly everywhere. They're really hard to kill. I think their seducers, Naba's seducers, are better because they have like fire two, earth two, and nature two, I think, versus the Ubar seducers who don't have any magic at all. And so in fifth, we have Vanheim. Vanheim is largely the same as they are in their early age variant, except their troop lineup has changed pretty substantially. Their sacreds are now cavalry riding dudes. Yeah, I mean, still all the same strengths of Vanheim from their early age. You can't take like a stupid brainless bless on your Vanheers and have them just chop up the whole world, but your Vans are still an excellent sacred. You still get Van Heers, except they're not sacred, but you've got blood, you've got really high air, you can get into death. It's a great, great nation. Ashdod is up here exclusively because they are really brain dead. Game plan with Ashdod, very simple. You get out your big, dumb, hell-blessed sacreds, and you just crush all of your foes, and you reclaim the Holy Land. And the last S-tier nation is Urmor. What else can you really say about Ermor? I mean, a 7,000 long dead. So these are all the Esther nations. I think these first five are in very close competition. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see someone say Nazca's the best nation in the game. So we'll start with Vanarus. They're basically like they took the best parts of Rus and they gave it on a nation that can make real forts and have real mages. Yeah, I, th I think the worst part about Vanarus is their sacred unit is just pretty okay. Like, he's a stealthy elf, so he can't be that bad. But he isn't, like, a super killy elf, like a Van here would be. He's not riding a horse, so his map move isn't very good. He's he's still really defensive. He's got great stats. You know, you can bless him. He's, you know, he's I think he's fine. He's just not amazing. Okay, next, continuing the line of elves, is Yis. Yis has great sacreds that get even better on land. So I think they are, even though they are an underwater nation, they absolutely can compete with the land nations. I think they can compete with land nations even better than they can compete with underwater nations. Like on land, they get their cool Marverny Crystal Gear sacred stuff, but they don't get blood. Uh, having high astral is pretty strong. Also, your troop lineup as yes is just not very impressive outside of your Morvarks. Speaking of cool and neat, nations. Jotunheim is over here. If you saw my series I did on Jotunheim, I did not use their unit roster to their fullest extent, nor did I even use their mage roster to their fullest extent. But I think they are pretty good. But yeah, I mean, Scrati are really neat, great mages. Just really good access to a lot of powerful paths of magic with nature, blood, astral, and death too. Yeah, I mean, basically they got, they got all the important paths of magic. And next is Middle Age Agartha. Middle Age Agartha loses their precious, precious slimy boys for disgusting humans. But I think they get a much greater power in return, that being their constructs and their statues. Agartha's statues are pretty insane, 
I think you can take a really broken Bless on them to make them insanely powerful. And Agartha's normal paths of magic are pretty great. Death is always nice to have. Earth works beautifully with human troops. Next is End. End. I think End is broken. Like, I think End is actually maybe one of the best nations in the game. But I think they're super map dependent. Like, they're really RNG. If they get out Gog Reavers and all those other dog-headed troops, I think they're insane. But their other guys are decent, like the Hobbits and the, the Fairy Women. Like, they're all right. They're good. I think any nation that has high astral is just automatically pretty pretty decent. Next is my favorite nation in Dominions 5, which is Middle Age Ulm. Ulm is the silliest, uh, <laughs> most, like, I don't want to say brain dead, but uh, it appeals to my... Uh, the simplicity of Ulm appeals to my design sensibilities. I mean, I really like Ulm. I, you know, Earth is my favorite path of magic. I also really like forging. Everything about Ulm is, I just, I love it. You know, like simple troops that have a really strong strength and a really bad weakness. Their worst thing is that their magic is so limited. So I think even though their late game power may not be that amazing, it's consistency that really gives them this high rank and that they're just always consistently good. Ulm can consistently get a strong early game and a really powerful mid game. Next is Facia. Facia has really neat paths of magic. They have super strong communions that basically hit the entire elemental tree of magic. Uh, with a summon of theirs, they can also get super high nature. So any nation that can get nature in a communion is pretty fantastic. They also have sailing, which is neat. Also, the fact that they spawn on an island that just has a bunch of extra money makes it really hard to get rid of Facia. Basically, their power is a little determined on the map. So that's it for A tier. Again, all these nations in A tier, very strong, very winnable. So the king of B is Satis. Satis in Middle Age, I think, is much cooler than their Early Age version. They have really great death and nature. Middle Age Satis gets really neat uh, assassins that you can give skull staffs to and spam skeletons during assassinations, which is super strong. We have Middle Age Abyssia, who is vastly superior to their Early Age version just from this one simple trick. They, give, they gave their Warlock plus one Astral, plus one Blood, and they made him a little more expensive, and that was really all that was needed. They got rid of the bad mages of Early Age Abyssia that you would never want to make. Their troop lineup is largely the same. They still get owned by Rain. They still get owned by Armor Piercing stuff, but now their Blood Hunting and Communioning powers are much better. And next we have Middle Age Man, who is much worse than... Fomoria that they took over. I said that early age Tianchi is the most generic nation in Dominions 5, but that's definitely not true. Middle age man is definitely more generic. I mean, they're still cool. Their sacreds are stealthy. They've got great nature magic. Air is really high too, and air is always amazing. Also, an overall strong nation is Pythium, who have some of the coolest communions that you'll find in Dominions 5. Their troop lineup is okay. They are human Ermorians. Their sacreds are fine. If you buff them, they can become very strong. So that can compensate for the fact that they're very weak and don't do very much on their own. They still have Holy Three Priests. They've got assassins that they can recruit. Had some uh, unfortunate technical difficulties that have now been hopefully resolved. So... I was just finished talking about Pythium, and I'm going to talk about Flegra. So Flegra is basically better than Makone in every way imaginable. They can still climb really high up the elemental paths outside of air, which is a sad thing to lose. They have great thugs, great death on those thugs, which is important. They still have an irritating dominion but they get a bunch of free spawn garbage chaff. They have really neat communion mages. Next is Kalem. Middle-aged Kalem uh, are still birds, thankfully, although middle-aged Kalem's temple guard don't fly, which is a pretty sucky weakness to have. But in cold provinces, they are actually super tanky. 
I mean, they're not Ulmish levels of tank, but they're pretty close. They still have all of their really cool summonable mages, so they have great magic access, uh, especially for mid-game. I just sort of put them lower because their troops are kind of garbage. Like, they fly, which is good, but outside of that, they kind of suck, and their sacreds are not impressive. Their early game magic is also sort of bleh. They have high water, which is bleh. Ugh. Ugh. They're all right. I, I think middle age Kalem is, is totally solid. Yes, and here we have middle age Tian Chi. Bunch of magic, but it's all really low level magic. I mean, they can put in communions and make it bigger, but um, they sort of have got like the late age syndrome, human syndrome going on of all of their magic paths being only level one. They've got crossbows, which is a really neat ranged unit to have. Their sacreds are okay. Like, early age Tianchi can get their Demons of the Heavenly Rivers, which are a really great unit. Middle age Tianchi just gets a little less. They have Living Mercury. I don't like Living Mercury. I mean, it's cool. I don't think it's as good as Water Elemental Spam, though. Speaking of good nations, uh, as Arcacephaly is next. Arcacephaly here has much worse sacreds in the middle age. Not having flying Pegasus riders really sucks. They still have great astral magic though, and they still have high-ish nature. Not as high, but still good nature. I'm not sure if this next one is a controversial take, but I think MA Relay is absolutely a solid nation. I think this is they got a insane power spike over their early age version, and it just took this one this one weird trick, uh, legs, and suddenly they become good. I mean, early age relays mages were already pretty strong. It's just they can't get out of the water. And I ranted enough about not getting out of the water. We don't need to go over that again. But middle age relay uh, still has the same sort of crappy, cheap army that the early age has. But they have mind-blasting, non-sacred, pseudo-sacred things, which I think are pretty insane troops. The Void Gate is always like this Pokemon RNG thing, and they can get really high into death from their superb Astral Magic. So the final nation that I'll put in B is Shinuyama. Their troop lineup is kind of bleh. Like their Goblin Samurai I think are really cool. I mean, really the best thing you can say about Shinuyama is the Bakemono Sorcerer, which is like a broken mage that the nation just randomly has. Like they don't deserve to be this good, but the Bakemono Sorcerer is like just a bonkers, insane mage. The problem is the dude is always like way, way too old. So he'll just keel over and die almost immediately after you recruit him. So you have to take unaging as Shinuyama, unless you're doing some, I don't know, insane, wacky nonsense. But I think the nation's all right. They've got high death from their Bakemono Sorcerers. They've got a pretty decent assassin, and their goblin troops range from okay to bad but chaff. So they don't have a sacred. Um, I mean, they're just, they're all right. You know, Shinoyama's fine. They've still got the cool summons. Uh, you know, they're Japanese, so they get higher, they get higher rank. They get B rank. And now a nation very close to my heart. Middle Age Iru. Nah, yeah, I mean, not really much to say here. Middle Age Iru has elves, but they have slow moving elvish troops that aren't even very good statistically, except they have human troops that just suck. I made a hour long video talking about this nation already, where I go into great detail about all their problems. And next is Marignon who don't really have very good troops. Their magic is all right, but it's kind of just like a... Basically, they're like a shadow of Middle Age Ulm, like in terms of magic. They've got great fire and decent astral too, but fire is sort of a meh path of magic. However, Marignon has really great sacred troops. Knights of the Holy Chalice can be blessed and can just kill stuff because they're super dumb hell-blessed cavalry. Uh, speaking of nations that live off their sacreds, you have Bandar Log. And Bandar Log lives and breathes Tiger Riders. Tiger Riders are really cool, really strong units. Um, but much like Kailasa, their army is still mostly filled with garbage. Also, very annoyingly, Bandar Log only has a 
level one priest that can lead troops around. So you have to bring this like really trashy priest to bless your tiger riders. Ruck loses the cool swamp lore of Ur, and in return, they oh they also lose the Mushushu solo guy. Now he's driven around by a female sacred. Yeah, I mean Uruk is very much like Ur. Their troops are kind of good. Their mages are pretty okay, but their mages are just a little too weak to be great for thugging. Like Uruk is just all right. And oh my, how the mighty have fallen. Here we have Shababa, who are clearly in a much better form. You know, I mean, who who wouldn't want a toad over a bat, right? Uh, the frogs kind of suck. None of them wear hats, so they're really vulnerable to projectiles. So you can power up with them and get pretty strong uh, death stuff, but their troop lineup is just so garbage. But they do have quite a bit of magic diversity, so I will say that puts them solidly above some of these other nations. Oh, Mictlin. Man, what happened? Well, basically what happened is they lost blood. Like, you can break into blood with Mictlin if you go somewhat late in the game and you can summon their uh, weird blood things. I don't, I don't know how to say them. They've got the same magic that Uruk has, like, you know, nature and astral and air and spades, except their troops aren't really as strong or tanky or hard-hitting as Uruk's are. Jaguar warriors, you can still bless out, and I think you can recruit jaguars everywhere. And then the final nation I'll put in C tier is Atlantis. I think this version of Atlantis is very mundane. It's a, they took out a lot of the fun stuff from early age Atlantis. They still have big water magic. They can still get big communions. But it's like Middle Age Relay has those same communions, but Middle Age Relay's troops don't cost normal amount of upkeep. Like, they're slaves, so they pay much less. So we'll start with Machaka. They are no longer the Lion Kings. They have now turned into a spider nation. And so they give up a lot of their unit diversity in exchange for big, dumb, expensive sacreds. And their big, dumb, expensive sacreds aren't even that great. Like... Um, if you can successfully herd your black spiders back to the capital to get them refueled, then I think they get a lot stronger, but it's sort of like outside of the black spider, what does the nation really have going for it? Like, your cap-only super death sorcerers are not sacred, so they're going to eat up a bunch of money, they're slow to recruit, they're old, so, I mean, old age is not something you can solve since they're, they're not sacred. They do have cool assassins that can scale walls, which is a very nifty good feature. But yeah, I mean, like, middle-aged Machaka, they basically took the really weak, crappy mages that early-age Machaka had and made them the mainstays. And so next is Oceania, who are basically exactly the same as their early-age version. They have, you know, Pangea's troops, except a little worse, they have bad mages that get even weaker when you bring them onto land where they need to fight. And they get a bunch of, like, unrest and they lose money in their uh, land provinces. Which just sucks. And they're primitive forts, too. Which is even worse. Okay, alright. I mean, we all know about Pelagius Train Kings. I don't need to... I don't need to go on another rant about them. Please. But Pelagia is basically the same. It's like they've got trash mages that you have to spend a huge amount of money on, and they can't even go on land, and you have to send the, like, indie units, indie mages to go on land. But at the very least, Pelagia is functional. Like, even though Pelagia maybe can't beat uh, any of these nations, maybe they could beat Atlantis under the water, at least they function as a nation. I considered making a new tier and just calling it F and putting Asphodel in there. I don't think Asphodel works as a nation. I think they're just broken. Like, they don't they don't function properly. Like, the devs want them to be an offshoot of Pangea. Because otherwise, I mean, they're largely just a mirroring of Pangea, except they give up blood for death, which is great. I mean, death is a great path of magic, and nature is also really strong. 
but their dominion kills their own population, and mannequins, I think mannequins are just a terrible free spawn unit. Like, they're, they're not worth the population that you're losing. I wish they were good. I wish they were strong. I think Asphodel conceptually is really neat, and I would really love to play them, because I guess I love playing the worst Dominions has to offer. But yeah, I mean, these guys are... Uh, <laughs> uh. Anyway, so this is my middle-aged tier list. I am way less confident about this list than I was my early age tier list. I think a lot of these could be dramatically changed. Middle age, I think, is just overall a much higher power tier than early age, which is weird, because early age is like totally the era of Dragon Ball Z sacred big smashy fighters. So I will link this tier maker list in the description below. Also, I got these flag sprites very handily from the Dominions 5 big discord from the user Loggy, so thank you to you for getting these to me. I greatly appreciate it. And yeah, if you want to talk about your tier list or mine, please feel free to join my Discord server and we can talk about it. And if you like content like this, I have a Subscribestar page, more support, better quality videos. That's all. I hope this was helpful.